Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Um, what I wanted to do is talk about outboard gear and patch bays. Uh, so, my name is Mark, for those that are new to the channel. That if you, this is your first time watching, my name is Mark. I call the channel Mark's Music Place. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Definitely hit the bell. It'll let you know when I post videos. Definitely write some comments. And also, um, give me a thumbs up. It all helps the channel. And uh, all right. So what this is about, this basic video is about if you um, are looking to incorporate quite a bit of outboard gear. You can have one rack, two racks, five racks, whatever outboard gear. Sometimes people will have outboard gear, they'll have a desk, and they'll have their main workstation with the monitor, you know, their controller, their interface, whatever, then they'll have outboard gear on each side, or they'll have outboard gear or whatever the case. Uh, you can actually, and a lot of people are like, well, how am I going to incorporate that with the interface compared to What's the best way to do that? And how, you know, patch bays can be confusing. At the same time, they're, they're actually really easy. If you understand the concept, they're actually pretty easy um, on this patch bay. And uh, really, technically, the patch bay is designed to route your gear as if you were plugging it in the back of the gear. Think of it like that, if that makes sense. So, with that being said, I'm going to break down, I'm going to try to explain the patch bay. But if you, have, if you want to incorporate a console, life is so much easier with outboard gear with a patch bay with the console. Uh, it just depends on how much uh, gear you actually have. Um, you don't have to use uh a patch bay, if you got only a few pieces of outboard gear and a console, you can plug it directly in if you're going to plug it in and leave it permanently. Like my setup downstairs is plugged in permanently because I'm just not going to switch out outboard gear. Um, so it's permanently plugged in. But when you have, like, I, I have a sort of preamps, EQs, uh, reverbs, a whole bunch of racks of compressors and things like that. You're going to want to pass me because you're not going to always, you're going to, and the purpose of it is for you can switch out. Let's say you're going to use this compressor on this particular mix one day, but you don't want to use that. You want to use a different compressor on this mix on a different day. The purpose of it is so you can pack in out gear so you can swap the gear out without necessarily swapping the gear out. You just patch it. It's the same thing as if you were in your DAW. And you say, well, I'm not going to use that plug-in. I'm going to insert that plug-in. You're doing the same thing. Except the difference is, instead of you right-clicking -click, right -click with the mouse and inserting or whatever the case would depend on how your DAW works, you are using patch cables. That's the difference. In some instances, in some instances, a lot of studios like to work this way because everything's already permanently, like every particular gear is permanently attached to a, a point on the patch bay. You just select whatever gear. You just go to that piece of gear. A lot of times they'll be named. And you just patch it in. So let's walk through the patch bay and why it's set up that way and how you can set up your patch bay with a bunch of outboard gear with a mixer and let's talk about how you would do it without a mixer okay you're just going to use your interface you can come in and out of your interface you're just going to eliminate you're just going to eliminate what you're going to connect to the patch bay based on if you have a mixer or not all right so with that being said let's okay to make it easy um, if you have a, let's start with, if you have a, um, if you have a patch, uh, not patch, if you have a room that you're going to record your band in, if you're going to record a band, most of the time, 90% of the time, if there's a, a control room and a separate live room, 
So you got a live room or a control room, control room, where everything, all the gears in the control room, and then you would have the live room where everyone's going to track at the band, and you're going to track the band. Um, then the first thing, the first thing you want to do, so the band can patch in to the control room, there would be a patch panel. There would be some sort of panel. And it would be like on the wall, somewhere in that in that that live room. It would be in in the live room somewhere, okay. Uh, so all the musicians are going to plug into that drum, you know, or the or the engineer is going to come and help the band connect their gear, microphones or whatever the case may be, you know, whatever microphones they need, uh, whatever keyboards, all that stuff is going to patch into the patch panel. And a patch panel be somewhere on the wall. For for me, I don't have a patch panel yet. I'm going to make a sort of a mobile patch panel. But so for right now, I'm using this patch bay, this XLR patch bay, as my patch panel. So I can patch into my control room system through this patch bay. The in, everything connects to the front. All the out, all the connections on the back. That's going into the top patch bay here all right now in patch bays everything to make it simple everything on patch bays are considered out top top connections are considered out and the bottom connections are considered in the only difference between the console and just going to your interface would be you would think of it like this. The top row will be out. So think of this as out of the live room. Think of it like that. And the bottom will be in. So think of it into the console. Out, in, right? Out of the live room, into the console. So before I go a little bit further on patch base, because I'm whole here, or because I'm handheld um i gotta watch how make sure i don't stop the recording button um since i'm handheld let me take this this one connector piece off since i don't have to buy the tripod okay all right that makes it easier all right and i gotta take my because this it's warm the heat's on I guess the it temperature didn't drop, so the heat didn't kick on. Okay. So, I know I shouldn't be throwing, I'll put this right here for now. All right. So, on patch bays, you already get the concept that you want outs on the top, you want ends on the bottom, okay? But also, the patch bay has to be configured in three different ways. Normal, half normal, and through. Now, if you are going to use, uh, you want to configure the patch bay two separate ways. If you're going to have a console, you want to configure your patch bay that's going to, that's going to the patch bay that's going to be used for, for your live room to come into a console, you want to configure the patch bay to be normal or half normal. Some people prefer normal, other people perform half normal. So what does that mean on normal and half normal? Half normal, what that half normal means that irregardless of what I plug into the top, the signal will not be interrupted. You won't, it won't stop the signal unless I plug something into the end, the bottom. Then it would be interrupted. Why would you want to do that? Well, that a lot of times you want to put that, you want to send, uh, so if you got something playing, for example, let's say you were having you were having the drummer or the musician test their instrument, or you're trying to test the mic on that instrument, and they're testing it. You can tell the drummer, okay, hit the kick, and the drummer just keep keep hitting the kick. He's doing this. He's hitting the kick, and soon as you plug something in the top to take it out, so you want to run it into a compressor or something, the signal won't stop, even if you plug in the top and you plug it into the compressor. 
and you want to you plug into the compressor, then you can see if the compressor's working, you know, whatever. You can see signal, then you can set up the compressor. You set the compressor the way you want. Okay, I'm ready. I like the settings of the compressor. You take the output of that that compressor from that patch bay, then you plug it into the bottom to continue the circuit. That's a half normal. That's why you want to have normal. If you normal, um, no matter if you put it in a if you put it in a normal configuration, no matter if you plug something in the top or the bottom, you're going to interrupt the signal. Like to me, <clears throat> I always leave stuff, a lot of stuff in normal for because I know what I'm going to. I know exactly what I'm going to do. So I'll plug it into. I'll interrupt the signal. Plug it into the out. So. And I'll plug into, and I'll run, go ahead and run into the compressor or EQ or whatever. And then I'll, I'll, I wouldn't matter if they're whatever the case or not. But some people put in half normal so they don't stop the signal in case the, the, you know, the musician's listening. He, all of a sudden you're patching this stuff and all of a sudden his signal cut, it stops for a second. He's listening or she's listening on headphones and all of a sudden the signal stops. You're like, they're like, they're, gonna, they're probably going to stop testing because they're going to think what happened, what happened. This is the reason why a lot of, a lot of people like to run half normal. Uh, for me, a lot of times for me, if I'm going to do something already, because I'm, I do all this stuff myself and I'm not running the band, I have it in normal. So I'm already going to have stuff patched in. I already know what I'm going to use on drums or whatever. So you got normal and have normal. And also you got a configuration of through. Now you want to set your patch bay to normal. Uh, that way, or half normal, whatever you prefer. So it comes out of the live room into the console, right? Or if you didn't have a console, you would say come out of the live room into the interface, whatever interface you're using. So you, some interfaces have two inputs, some inter inter interfaces have four, some have eight, some have 24. Um, the best way to, is to try to have as many inputs as you can if you're going to multi-track. All right. So that's the only difference that you're going to, how you're going to set that up. So your live room is going to come out of the live room into the console or out of the library into the interface. All right, easy enough, right? But if you have, uh, like me, the outs go into here, the outs come out of the live room in, the bottom ones go into the console. And I select my channels I'm gonna use for out for inputs. Now, the second row are outputs coming out of the interface into here, all right? They come out of the interface on the second, the bottom row. Let me move the camera. Second. So now I have the outs coming into the console on this top one. This better one is the outs coming out of the interface and the outs come out of the interface into the console. These bottom rows are ends into the consoles. This this con this patch bay is coming for outputs. So now I have all the rest of my gear, all the rest of these patch bays set to be instead of being normal to have normal, they're all set to through. And the reason why you want to do that is for you don't want to create loops or signal loops into the same gear. You don't want to run the output into the input on the same circuit because you'll create a loop so what you have to do is you have to set the patch bay to through so they so the, the tops and the bottoms are not connected internally on a on a patch bay that's connected that's set up for normal to have normal they're connected internally until you stick a, a patch cable into it that separates the signal but on that they're automatically connected internally when you set it to through Irregardless of what you plug in the top or the bottom, these two are not connected because they're set to through. That, and so I got the rest of them set that way. That way I can run the out 
input the outputs of my output gear of my whether it's a preamp preamps or EQs or compressors or whatever the outs go to the top the output come out of out of the of that unit and the in goes into the end of that unit that's how you would do it okay now if you didn't have a mixing console you can also take a patch bay um if you'd had no live room if you have no live room you can actually take a patch bay and run the out set your set the patch bay to through make sure it's configured for through and it makes you can run the outs the outs would go into the out of the interface and the bottom ones would go into the end of the interface you can do it that way all right and then you can take other patch bays and you can patch in gear to go into so you can patch whatever you can have another you can have another row like this row right here is my microphone preamps so your microphone preamps you can go into you can set it to through so all my microphone preamps would have through or this so that the outs would be on the out of the preamp the end of the end of preamp and so forth for all my preamps same thing with all my compressors or eqs all my compressors that's how it's got it set up you can have one patch bay that has outs for your interface then the bottom is ends of your interface you can do it that way and you don't have to ever connect you know you don't have if you don't have a live room you're doing everything just at your desk or whatever you can do it that way and you can set the next one for your preamps and you set all your preamps uh your and all your outboard gear you can set it that way so the top one could be where your outs would be the outs going to your outs of your interface the bottom would be the inputs of your interface and then you have another row of patch base for you if you have preamps or eqs or whatever and you can run, take the out and you can patch the out of that preamp you can take the out the output would come into the input of the interface for recording you can do that you can just patch them in that way and you say okay well the input of the preamp I'm going to take it and I'm going to plug in a cable that's going to go like I'm going to record a a guitar or bass or keyboard or, or synthesizer or whatever that can go to the input that's going to record into the interface uh, that's you know that's going to go into the preamp alright that goes into preamp and then the preamp the, then the input of the preamp come out of the preamp that's going to go into your interface for recording and then you're just going to monitor through your interface you can do it that way but for how this is set up when you're using a console is that this for me this is coming out of my live room so basically it's coming from my live room basically coming from that that patch bay panel on the floor over there that's considered my live room panel live room goes into the console okay all right now the output of the direct outs of my console are coming into are coming into this patch bay to go into the interface okay all right that goes into the interface down here so i can now so what I'm doing is I'm monitoring what I'm hearing coming from the instruments through the console, right? So if I need to patch something on that channel, whatever else on that channel, I can patch in. I can patch in through the patch bay, a piece of gear. You can do it that way. That's how it's actually how you would do it. So then the output, I would patch in a piece of gear a piece of gear like a preamp or whatever the case may be into so I can monitor that piece of gear in on that channel now uh, the sum it up um, last so it's all depends on what how you want to set up the configure I hope that I hope that's this makes sense on setting up your patch bay if that makes sense 
But yeah, that's how you would if the, with the console. So the output of the of the direct out it will go into. It's going to go into the input. So the output of this is here, and this the bottom is the input into the interface for recording. These bottom rows right here, right? That goes into the interface, right? And if I didn't want, I can also, because this is my preamps, if I'm not going to use the preamps on the console, as an example, um, I, if, I didn't want, if I want to use the preamps on the console, I wouldn't patch any external preamps, right? I would use the preamps, I use the preamps on the console. So I would just leave this, I wouldn't connect anything, okay? And I say, so the output would come, the direct outs are coming in here. So if I wanted to use the preamp on the console, but I want to use a compressor, let's say I want to use this compressor, I want to use this console's preamp, but I want to use the console, I want to use the, this, this compressor right here, this Pro VLA. I would then take the Pro VLA, since one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Right? That's nine and ten. I got a normal in, in the so I would come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That would be that preamp. I need to label this, but I know where everything's connected. So I would run an output into here. So what I would do is the direct outs, since they're the direct outs is out direct out of the consoles here. I would run a cable out of here into here first and then run the output into the input of the other interface to record so now what's coming from my live room which is here would go into the console and then direct out would come out of the console since it's normal to go into the interface it would be interrupted to go into that into this this channel to go into this compressor and then the output of the compressor would then go into the interface for recording or you, you so you get you get the idea you get the idea so you just got you got to think you basically overall you just have to think how can i so let me set this camera back up so basically you have to think how can i configure to use my gear you know it takes a little bit of you oh let me think how i'm going to route this once you do it all the time it makes sense. You're like, oh, this is it's me. patching through the patch bay and knowing exactly what you want to use in the in the signal chain in the routing, the signal chain routing. Then it makes a whole lot of sense because then you can go to it like that because you'll know exactly to the, that makes sense. So in, in signal chaining, all basically the concept is to hear something, you have to go through it, which means you have to go into it. You have to come out of it to hear it. And then to manipulate the signal going through something, that's what the buttons on the, on the unit are for, to manipulate the sound. Exactly how you're going to manipulate it. Like a compressor, you're going to change the threshold or the attack or the release, you know, the, the ratio and stuff like that. You're going to manipulate the signal with the compressor. The same thing with the EQ. You're going to boost or cut certain frequencies. You're going to manipulate the signal. So you're like, well, in your mind, you're thinking, what's the best compressor or what, or what's a good compressor or whatever the case, or which compressor or which EQ or how I want to signal chain this. For example, one last thing, I can sit there and say, okay, well, I'm going to run the signal chain. I'm going to want to use a little bit of EQ and I'm going to want to use a little bit of compressor to record into my DAW. How would I do that coming from my live room going through my console? Well, naturally, if you don't want to use the preamps of the console, then what you would do is you would come out of the, you would interrupt it coming from your live room, plug, take an output, run it through into, if you want to do the compressor first or the EQ first. I like to do EQs first and then compressor. So I would come out of the live room into an EQ, out of the EQ, out of the EQ, into a compressor, and then the compressor. Then I would go into the, uh, into the console for monitoring. Then I run that direct out into directly into the interface. But if I don't want to use um, that, then I can run it. I can run out of the live room into 
the EQ or then into the compressor directly into the interface but it's you got to depend on how the signal is going to be affected so this is a uh, so a lot of times you're like well am I going to use the microphone am I going to use the, the consoles preamp or am I going to use an external preamp you have to think am I going to use one of these some preamps you have to think do I want to use the preamp like for example synthesizers necessarily don't need preamps because they already got amps inside the synthesizers um, but guitar well guitar cabinets but the only thing is you're going to need to mic the guitar cabinets or drums because there's no there is no uh, there's no a microphone don't have an amp on it and neither does drums so you're like well I'm going to have to drum so no, naturally if you're going to mic a set of drums you're going to need preamps so you can use the consoles preamps so what you can do is you can take all your microphones plug them into the, your patch panel and uh, take your microphone plug into your patch panels and then that can come into the patch panel into the into the patch panel into the patch bay that would then come to the console now you can use the preamps on the console the direct out of the console is going to go into directly into the uh, and you can use that you can also patch in the chain compressors if need be which most engineers would so they're going to use the mic preamps on the console or they can decide I'm going to use the preamps so they're going to come out of out of the, the live room they're going to go into the preamp patch bay and choose one of these preamps and then that preamp the output of the preamp would then go into a compressor or whatever then that would go into the console or to directly into the interface so uh, I hope that makes sense on patch based setups so that's going to do it for this video and uh, I'm going to turn this heat down because it's getting toasty up here other than that thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one y'all have a great one